Okay, I want to talk in this video about why I am a Christian. I'm going to talk to you about my testimony and explain to you my path to finding Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour. So I was born the youngest of three boys. I was born into a Christian family. And my parents, they went to um, a free church, a charismatic church in Huntingdon in England. And my brothers and I went. My parents never really forced faith in Jesus on me, but they encouraged it. It was never, you know, you've got to go to church or, or what. My parents are very loving people. So basically, I was going to church from an early age, Sunday school and whatnot. And I felt a deep desire to um, give my life to Christ at the age of four. So I sat by my mother, we went through this book called Knowing God. But it, it was just sort of going through the motions. It was, I did it because I thought I should do it. You know, I did it because I thought, oh, you know, God, God exists and I should uh, give my life to him and so on and so forth. So anyway, I did that. Uh, didn't feel any different, really. Didn't feel like any different from the other kids. I was always a very quiet and shy, shy boy. Not really very popular as such like with, with other people and friends around. So basically I had a decent childhood. At about the age of seven or eight, something happened to me. It was quite scary. So basically I am... Um, well, it's, it's going to sound quite unbelievable, but I am telling the truth. When I was about seven, I was I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the toilet. And when I looked down the stairs, we had a, a stairs in a room, I saw what I can only think as, as some sort of monster or demon or whatever walking up the stairs towards me. I quickly ran to the bathroom and knocked on the door. Quite violent, said, Dad, Dad. And my father came out and um, I could see my father rebuking this thing, although I didn't look at it. I couldn't fully make out what it looked like. I just knew it was it was pure evil. I, that's the best way I can describe it. It was just pure, unadulterated evil. And my dad um, rebuked it at that time. So a couple of months or a year or so after this event, I was sleeping in my bed and I felt a tap on my head. I um, turned round to look what it is, and this being jumped up in front of me. I can, I was frightened, livid. It was. I could even draw it for you. It, it sort of had a, a squarish uh, kind of rectangular head going down. It had uh, sort of the very evil eyes, green eyes, um, and it was very, very hairy. It had a, a sort of greyish, bluish, hairy body. And I just hid under, I, I couldn't do anything but just hid under my covers. So I, w I basically was hiding under my covers, sleeping right up into my mid-30s, late 30s. I slept with my covers over my head. That's how badly this event affected me. Now, I know what many atheists uh, are going to say. They're going to say, oh, well, maybe it was an alien or it could have been a monster from another dimension or it could have been sleep paralysis. People suffer with these things. I know what I saw. I know what I saw in the first instance, and I know what I saw in the second instance. Although in the first instance, I didn't actually see the full face of the being, but I knew it was the same being. So anyway, I went through my adolescent hood. I was, I would consider myself one a, a church guy at that time. I, I didn't really seriously follow the faith, although I thought I was seriously following the faith. I would raise my hands in church meetings, might even try and prophesy, reading the Bible, doing all the things that a good Christian should do during my adolescenthood. But I could never quite live at the life that God wanted me to live in, in so much as I got involved in the wrong crowd, I tried smoking, I went to school with with a gentleman and, and we, we weren't, you know, we weren't very nice to some people, uh, that sort of thing. And um, there was always something, I always knew I was rotten at the core. There was always, but I never really faced it. I never really faced my rottenness uh, about who I was. Um, so fast forwarding on, um, at the age of about 18, I went uh, out with a girl uh, from the, in the, the local church. And I made a complete hash of it. 
I um, I just did just did everything wrong without going into it, and so this particular uh, girl, she wasn't very happy about it and whatnot. She did forgive me, but I remember shortly after that lying on my bed, and I remember saying to my mother, "There's no good in me. There's I just feel completely wicked and evil." And my mother couldn't console me. No one could console me. I just felt completely condemned but I didn't feel it was God condemning me I felt that what was in my own heart was condemning me essentially I stood before God condemned but it wasn't him condemning me so basically after that shortly after that there was a preacher that came round to the church who was a famous evangelist he brought lots of people to the Lord and he was preaching about Jesus being Lord of your life and I don't know why, but at the time, I just got a very serious, very serious tug on my heart that Jesus wasn't Lord of my life. I, I knew it. I knew that he wasn't. I knew he wasn't in charge. I knew he wasn't really working through me. So I went down in front of this, uh, in front of the meeting um, to uh, be prayed over. And the gentleman shook my hand and said, you're a very brave young man, because he knew I'd been in the church all this time and, and appeared a very devout Christian, appeared very devout, very devoted to the Lord, very praying and reading the Bible and all this jazz. Um, and to come then and say, well, basically, I wasn't really a Christian I was very brave. And uh, that's why he shook my hand and said, you're a very brave young man. So since then, God has been very involved in my life and I've gone on and I've seen his presence in me and in the situations that I've been in. I'm not going to go into that in this video, but that is effectively why I'm a Christian, how I became a Christian, and they're not the reasons why my faith makes sense. That will be covered in another video, but that is my testimony, and I join the testimony of thousands and thousands of people around the world, lots of which are on YouTube, who have declared that the Lord has saved them and Jesus has saved them and he's been involved in their life. So anyway, thank you for watching.